we can describe the efficiency of an algorithm, a program, or a programmatic operation in terms of the time it takes to do its work, or the amount of memory it uses, or the amount of secondary storage space it needs. These can be useful things to know, but of course the performance of a program depends on the capabilities of the computer it's running on. A program that's sluggish on today's computers might be twice as fast on next year's model. Big O notation tells us something else. Big O describes the way that the time taken by a program depends on the amount of data it has to work with. Big O tells us how well a program scales. We say that Big O describes the complexity of a program. Common sense tells us that a program takes longer when it has more data to process. This is true in the case of a simple linear search. If the target value happens to be at the end of the list, then having to search through twice as much data would double the time taken. But this is not the case for all algorithms. I'm going to illustrate some big O complexities with made-up data and charts. I'm also going to talk about some well-known algorithms and how their big O complexities can be derived. These are the algorithms I'm going to be looking at. Let's start with the linear search. The linear search is sometimes referred to as a sequential search. An unordered list is searched for a particular value. Each and every value in the list is compared with the target value. This is something of a brute force approach. It's usually implemented with a simple loop. Looking at the pseudocode for a linear search, we can see that the loop visits and tests each item in turn. If the target value is found, a Boolean variable is set to true and there's a forced exit from the loop. This is what it looks like. We're searching this list for a target value of 63. Notice that the target value is at the end of the list. It takes a certain amount of time to find it. If we double the amount of data and our target value is still at the end of the list, you can see it's taking twice as long to find the target. Double the amount of data again and it takes twice as long again. In fact, if we triple the amount of data, it'll triple the time taken. There's a nice, simple relationship between the amount of data and the time taken by the linear search. This is what it looks like on a chart. There's a nice, simple relationship between the amount of data and the time taken to process it. The time taken is directly proportional to the amount of data. The gradient of the line, of course, depends on the computer that's running the program, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be a nice, straight line. In terms of big O complexity, then, for n items of data, the time taken is equal to some constant multiplied by n. The constant depends on the computer. The big O time complexity is said to be linear. And in big O notation, we write O brackets n. This chart, therefore, describes all algorithms which follow linear time complexity.